Walter Rodney with great hope and promise for this country because of his leadership to the pathetic racist state that they are currently now in, find themselves in. And so for, at various times in our history, Guyana has been a force for good. And sometimes we believe he has been wrong side of history in some, in some cases. He has a right to this building hot up here. I'm watching this wood here, this wood here, in out and out. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one right here. This would need some more water. If they catch anything, dry don't catch your back. Look at me, man. Look at me. Tell me number and can you. I can't hear you speak up. Sergeant. Unit. Yeah, oh, ghastly and shiny tank guard. Oh, guys in charge. Me also get born. Me also the dumb one since last night. Why did he do this? He kind of said, me son, me son, kill the brother. Yeah. Right. So did you report this matter to the police? I report it, yes. I, re I reported it. I go back after I come and I, after I go come back and I meet this here. I go back at the station. I, but when I go back, I didn't meet the two men who dropped me home. And I had to wait a couple minutes. And the man said, I said, I said, I said, come see what the man do to me. I'm begging you, come see what the man do to me, please. And I said, I come, there we go. And the man, I bring the man and show the man the last set and the man take pictures and stuff. And the time to go back at the station, but right now hey, they are waiting for me over there. You can identify the persons who came into your house? No boss, and it's like... Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy. And stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks. With the aid of technology, Demerara Bank's loans and advances have soared to $95.36 billion, accounting for 38% of banking sector lending over the last 12, the bank said in a statement. The bank also maintained its exemplary record of zero non-performing loans. The information is contained in the bank's consolidated financial performance for the year ended September 30th, 2024, delivering exceptional growth across all financial indicators with significant contributions to lending and support for key sectors of Guyana's economic development. Additionally, the bank reported a 34% increase in loans and advances, rising from G71.37 billion dollars in 2023 to 95.36 billion dollars in 2024. This growth, the band said, reflects DBL's strategic efforts to diversify its lending portfolio, with notable expansions in agriculture, real estate, SMEs, and services, all supporting the growing Guyanese economy. Chief Executive Officer Dalet Pardee, while driving sectoral growth, the bank has maintained zero non-performing loans for the third consecutive year, underscoring disciplined credit management, the statement read, accounting for 38% of the total increase in industry-wide lending. DBL reinforced its role as a major contributor to Guyana's economic progress. This milestone year was also marked by strategic investments in customer-centered technology, disciplined risk management, and continued commitment to modern, customer-focused solutions. Enhanced technological infrastructure further underscored DBL's mission of economic empowerment and innovation. The bank has planned a series of transformational technological rollout within the next few months that will improve customer experience. These rollouts will soon be announced to the public, the DBL statement noted. Is, is the government I saw, considering... I saw it, I okay. glanced through it. So, Kwana has been around for a long time. I think he must have been in, he must be over 19 now. And he's part of that WPA cabal that moved from the lofty days of Walter Rodney with great hope and promise for this country because of his leadership to the pathetic racist state that they are currently now in, find themselves in. 
And so, for, at various times in our history, Kwayana has been a force for good. And sometimes we believe he has been the wrong side of history in some, in some cases. He has a right to express a view. I hope that his view about what took place in Buxton too, where the PNC was part of the trouble period when the people were being killed in that community, etc., that that view is given prominence because it supports our finding that Apnu was part of the PNC was part of the killing and massacring of ordinary people through the support for those people who took over that community and destroyed the community itself, ordinary people in the community. These were criminals who infiltrated, nothing to do with regular Buxtonians. So I'm happy about that. But he also said about um, this legislation and all of that. We made it clear. I dealt with this issue before and said, Clive Thomas was the originator of the ID. So he goes back to Clive Thomas thing. Now, say, I've dealt with that already. Since when Clive Thomas originates an ID about cash grant in societies that experience windfall gains. People have written about this in the last 50 years. You have technical people who have written about this idea. It has evolved. Even you had exper experiments in Europe with a universal income grant where they said, let's give everyone at a certain level a sum of money and let's see how it works for people. And the experiment didn't go well in some parts. So to say that Clive Thomas originated the idea is like saying the same thing that Apnu came up with this brilliant idea that you can use gas to generate power that they claim. When, because they were in office in 2015, gas has been used to generate power for the last maybe 100 years in our, our world. And they originated the idea about using gas. <clears throat> so it's nonsense. This is the state they have, they have come to. Oh, we talk about it on a program and therefore the government is doing this. Therefore, we are the ones who originated the idea. We made it clear that there will be a combination of things, long-term and short-term. So he has, he has suggested that we should go with Clive Thomas. An idea off the top of his head without no calculation. The 5,000 per person, okay? 5,000 US, that's a million dollars per person. That's a million dollars per person will end up with, say if we have 600,000 in eight people in Guyana, it will be $600 billion, right? It will be $600 billion every year we'd have to give. In the three years that we have been collecting oil money, we haven't even had three, uh, 600 billion in the budget. We run r just around that, nothing else. And that's for three years of oil money in the budget. So he's saying you have to, it's more than we, twice as much as we have collected in the budget this year. So we must borrow 300 billion and give every cent we collect in the oil money to people and borrow another 300 billion and give them to meet those numbers. Unsubstantiated. It's, it's nonsense. They just come up the top of their head and call a number and say, look, I call a high number. 
anybody could call. Apnu every day says, every time we suggest something, they say, we'll give you 20 times more. 400, they want to move threshold to 400 billion, million or 400,000 a month. Nobody believes these guys. Ask Clive Thomas what he did for the sugar workers when he was heading the company. If he believes in universal income, how come they sent home 7,000 people and 15,000 people lost their jobs directly because of the closure of some of their estates with the private cane farmers? What did he do for those people? It's nonsense. And so they live on these old things. Oh, we said it first a million years back. And therefore, the PPP is not our great idea. It's not nonsense. And that's why I'm saying anybody who is reading about this would know it's not an original idea. What we're doing is not original, the PPP. We're just making sure that it fits into a sustainable framework. We're not doing anything original or it started with APNU. We're just doing something that fits sustainably. So we can build the roads, we can build the power plants, we can build the bridges, we can build the the infrastructure out for future growth. We can tackle education, we can tackle healthcare, we can tackle housing, expand those. We can give our children some more money, our pensioners some more money, and we can find money for cash grant to, to every citizen. It's a, a, a total picture. We're fitting what we can do in a framework that addresses all of that stuff. These people are one shot. Do this, they don't, they don't fit it into a framework. And so, but it's not anything original. We didn't have massive green power to have to put this together. They take credit for routine things. So will there be any legislation? No, 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 because, because that's why I'm saying, how would you have legislation to do this? What happens? So, all right, it doesn't make sense if you put legislation and governments, they legislate everything. And then you can't, you cannot implement it. It depends on, so what happened next year? If we don't get any money, like from the oil sector, oil prices tank and come down to $30 a barrel, which happened in 2016, 2015, 2016. And you, well, you get small sums. What happens? You, you're not going to, you know, you then stuck with big recurrent expenditure. It's the recurrent expenditure. These are the same people, Clive Thomas will write a whole paper on Dutch, Dutch disease and, 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 and the destruction of the economy and everything else. And why, and then will promote something. Well, I don't think he did that, but here, this, this gentleman is creating it. So uh, you have to avoid growing recurrent expenditure at the same pace at which you grow the help to people and the infrastructure. That is something that we should not have to prove today. They've seen what has happened around the world. If you go to Suriname, you see when, and anyway, anyway, let me don't criticize um, other countries where they have had this, but around the world. Around the world, this has happened, and those countries have failed. Failed. We're not gonna. We're not gonna go down that route. We're not gonna lead this country to failure. We're not gonna lead this country to short-term prosperity. It has to be long-term, sustained prosperity for our people and our children. Road conditions at two busy intersections, Lamaha and Middleton Streets, and Duncan Street and Bel Air Road, have become a point of concern for drivers. These upgraded intersections show signs of erosion, structural damage, and inadequate barriers posing a serious threat to public safety. At Lamaha and Middleton Streets, the intersection is compromised by a narrow, worn down road surface and an exposed canal on one side. A crumbling concrete barrier meant to separate the road from the canal, now partially collapsed, offers little protection for vehicles and pedestrians alike leaving drivers worried about potential accidents. Of a six-year-old boy lost his life earlier this month after swallowing a thumbtack while at school and choking on it. His family believes his life could have been saved had his teacher paid attention to his cry out for help. 
However, the school has indicated that the teacher offered help right away and has provided a video recording of the incident. The incident took place on the 29th October. According to the family, the young boy attended a private primary school in the village of Crean on the west coast of Demerara. With surveillance video cameras in the classroom, the family explained that during the session, little Mekai Rodriguez could have been seen walking over to the class teacher showing signs that he was having difficulty breathing. He was reportedly directed back to his seat, but later returned to the class teacher with his water bottle in hand and shaking, but was again directed to return to his seat. Family members said it wasn't until the boy was noticed struggling to breathe and shaking in his seat that the class teacher took notice of him. He became unconscious and was rushed to the West Demerara Hospital, where he died as doctors tried to revive him. It was later revealed that he had swallowed a thumbtack and it might have blocked his airway in addition to causing additional damage internally. However, the school has provided a video recording of the incident, which showed the teacher offering help to the young boy once he went to her with the complaint. The teacher could have been seen leaving her desk and offering help before seeking the help of other teachers and rushing the child to the hospital. The matter is under probe. However, the Mourning family have indicated that they believe the teacher should have paid much more attention to the young boy when he made two attempts to get her attention before eventually falling into a state of unconsciousness. The Education Ministry is aware of the incident and its welfare department is examining the tragedy. A fire of unknown origin broke out on Thursday afternoon in Mackenzie Linden, prompting a swift response from the Guyana Fire Service. The incident was reported to the Linden Fire Station at 1414 ers leading to the immediate dispatch of two fire units to Co-op Crescent. Upon arrival, firefighters encountered a small stall engulfed in flames, which was being used for a clothing business. Thanks to their quick action, the blaze was controlled and extinguished within minutes, preventing any damage to nearby structures. Initial investigations suggest that the fire might have been caused by unattended garbage burning in the vicinity. Firefighters arrived on the scene within two minutes of receiving the call, demonstrating their readiness and efficiency in handling emergencies. The quick response played a crucial role in containing the fire and ensuring that it did not spread further. As investigations continue, officials are looking into the specific circumstances that led to the fire. The Guyana Fire Service has emphasized the importance of fire safety and vigilance regarding open flames and burning debris to prevent similar incidents in the future. Marcos. Uh, there's only one shot, Theodore. This is between PNC Party Office and Eureka. Those small shops at the back, we call the um, Celebrity Avenue, they're at the back of Celebrity Avenue. This building actually is no building. Send it to this building hot. Are you watching this woody, this woody in Altona? This this woody, this one, this wood right here. This wood needs some more water. If they catch anything dry, they don't catch up. Uh, this catch is right through this one. No, this one. Come back to the water. Don't. If we get a bucket, we could do this one here, Bruce. These two. You see this one still active? Now we bucket it. I'll come back and spill more water. This is very left overnight. This thing is still raised up. We want this here catching.
Sleeky bad, but I never get so. Send water. See, light garbage and end up lighting the shop. What story is this? Pay Shivon or Kingston Waste Management. A cell phone recorded video of a soldier allegedly stealing fuel from the Guyana Defense Force GDF bus went viral on Thursday. The rank was identified as Sergeant Wilson in the video. The opening scene began with a hose extending from the bus's fuel tank to one of three yellow jars. A man believed to be the soldier's superior said, come soldier, before asking him to state his name, number, and rank. As the sergeant responded, he quickly removed the hose and turned to face the man. After being questioned, the man said that bus was booked out from the Air Corps and taken to a location to fuel up. The man then questioned why he was taking out fuel from the bus after fueling it up. The GDF later confirmed that the video was authentic. This video was made as a form of evidence of the act, and it is unfortunate that it was shared in the public domain, the GDF stated. According to the Army, the soldier was caught with the assistance of its electronic vehicle tracking system. After being alerted of an anomaly by our tracking system, the rank was caught in the act by a superior officer and has since been processed for disciplinary actions, added the GDF. Come, soldier. Look at me, man. Look at me. Tell me a number, Uncle Neil. I can't hear you speak up. Sergeant. Unit. Where this bus book out to go? Where book out to go? I just come up on the bus. Who book this bus book out the Air Corps? Yes, sir. Who's the vehicle yeah, commander? I went over to BCS to sir. You went over to BCS to so. fuel up? Yes, sir. And after you fuel up, you come here to take out the fuel, then you're going back to your core. You got more, more of these cans? Leader of the Alliance for Change, AFC, attorney Nigel Hughes believes Guyana is not too far away from a full breakdown in law and order due to the increasing lack of confidence in the Guyana police force. Mr. Hughes, 
made the comment during a virtual panel discussion last evening. He said the Guyana police force under the leadership of acting commissioner of police Clifton Hicken is facing a crisis. I think everybody knows the level of confidence in the Guyana police force, and certainly the leadership of the Guyana police force is close to the floor. I don't know how you can possibly have anything looking like a modern country with the levels of scandals that are taking place in the Guyana police force in the upper level. And these allegations are not just coming from the citizenry. The police and their various compartments and departments are accusing each other of horrendous crimes, the AFC leader said. Currently before the courts is Assistant Commissioner of Police, Calvin Brutus. He is facing 240 criminal charges over a series of alleged financial crimes. Other senior officers within the force have also been accused of acts corruption and of having links to the criminal underworld. They have all denied those allegations. Pointing to countries like Colombia and Mexico, where there has been a surge in crime and gang violence, Hughes warned that politics and crime should never intermix. He said Guyana needs to take action before it is too late. When you get to that stage of entrenchment of criminal activity and its relationship with politics, you don't walk back from that. It is impossible to walk back from that. But you can hope to do is navigate as you go forward. And Guyana is at a stage where it is clear just looking at what is going on in the head of the Guyana police force. Generally, the top brass and the numbers that are being called, what industries would do that? People who commit murder, and I suspect most of them, if they are wealthy enough, they will deal with the corruption at the police station. They are not going to deal with it up at the top, he said. The AFC leader said the country is facing difficult times, and it is time to change course. The Guyana Human Rights Association and the People's National Congress Reform have both made calls for a total overhaul of the Guyana police force. Boxing fans are gearing up for an action-packed night on November 22nd, as U.S.-based Guyanese Elton Derry returns to the ring to headline an exciting pro-am card at the National Stadium Tarmac. Derry known for his fierce style and unyielding drive, is set to electrify the hometown crowd in a high-stakes bantamweight bout that promises to be a thrilling clash. His opponent will be announced shortly for the event, which is scheduled to have a stacked card, which also involves four amateur bouts. Supporting the main event, Dianese Olympian Kevin Alicock will take on Royal Azamora in what is expected to be a technical and fast-paced battle. Alicock, a skilled and rising talent, aims to showcase his refined technique and quick footwork against Zamora, a formidable and experienced competitor. Both fighters are hungry for a win, making this matchup a potential show stealer. Adding to the intensity, Dianese Dexter Marks is set to face off against Shaka Garcia. Marks, a crafty and strategic boxer, will be looking to leverage his ring intelligence to overcome Garcia's power punching style. In another undercard bout, Guyanese Lored Stewart will square off against Nickel Joseph, adding further excitement to an already stellar card. With top talent and intriguing matchups, this night promises non stop action and local pride at its finest. Fans would not want to miss the energy of live boxing as some of the sport's best showcase their skills on the national stage. Gilbert Burroughs. Sorry? Gilbert Burroughs. Yeah, Gilbert Burroughs. Yeah, but them scammy blacky. Everybody scammy blacky. And you are the father of the guy who stabbed the other guy. Yes, okay. yes, Travis. Right. Tell me what happened here today with you. Forget the stabbing. Tell me what happened. It's, it's last night this thing happened. Mm. I went after I come from the station with me, son. After we done in thing the putting the lock up and thing, and I come with the police drop me till by the car now. Hey, I said, man, I got to walk the rest. Right. And I come inside, and I come here, me, um, me trip, me, um, me like chick bike, and they put the road in front of them, they like them go for kite away, right? And after the alarm went on, the wheel lock off, come in the lamb down, the wheel is lock off, it's can't roll all right, it. I said, what's this? I said, mommy, back doing pony road, somebody had to come in my house. So when they open the gate and come in, this is why he made so. We do a kick open, the man push down, the man push down, we the man push down me what thing break up me place break up me tv and my thing and that satellite thing and shy it the satellite barker with carol or gasoline and shine the thank god oh god is in charge me i was in get bond um you also don't bond since last night why did he kind of said it told me son me son kill the brother yeah so did you report this man to the police 
I report it, yes. I re- I report it. I go back after I come and I after I go come back and I meet this here. I go back at the station. I, but when I go back, I didn't meet the two men who dropped me home. And I had to wait a couple of minutes. And the man said, I said, I said, man, come see what the man do to me, man, I'm begging you, come see what the man do to me, please. And the man said, I come, there we go. And the man, I bring the man and show the man the last set, and the man take pictures and so. And the time to go back at the station, but right now, they waited waiting for me. I would, uh, you can identify the persons who came into your house? No, but I can't, I, I, I can't identify them. Me see, me see, so. But you are certain that this is in retaliation if to you, the killing? To the killing. But this never happened before? This never happened to me before. This never happened oh, to no, me yeah. before. I never, never turned something here when he was mud. Turned something here and I don't trouble nobody. And I start to miss on them. I start to miss on them. Yeah, keep out the problem. Yeah, keep out the problem. And this is the outcome. Me deserve this. The mature don't live with me, they live with the moral. Right. right? They don't live with me. Alright, what happened? What you heard happened make your son um stop this guy? Um we told your mother call me last night, right? Mm-hmm. After I go over there and the thing is the man, um, Blackie come quick, come quick. Joshua just stab him, stab a boy. I say, man, yeah, is man, yeah, is calling me when you had any problem. So man, and they say, Robert, me step me there by leaving me, me row. Because I know come up and walk and I know I just sit down now, you know. Right. And I say, I would go cross there, but I'm taking a little breeze off. Right. I know go cross. I know go cross there. They said Joshua then, I stop me saying, hey, you son, just stop Gaza, son. A little one this call, mm-hmm. a woman this call Gaza, she little son. You son, just stop Gaza, little son. I said, man, Elijah, he didn't know not the big one, the little one. I said, Joshua, oh God. I, I said, man, hold on, hold on. Joshua was quiet, he quiet, quiet. This is my heart attack. When this guy come here, you need to this bike and talk as if he's a man that he preached this or preached it. We don't got no kindness. I try to form a conversation already. This bike quiet, quiet. I never, you know, I never expect, you know, for something to happen like this. What would you like to say to the family, though? Big pardon. Of the dead person. Big pardon? What would you like to say to the family? I say, man, I'm really sorry that all would happen. Right? And I apologize. I give them the deepest, mem- you know, yes. sympathy. Because I don't the any problem. You know, I go to me work and I come home and this old labor know how I peaceful. I don't like problem, Travis. I don't like problem. and I sorry and I, I beg you for me like because they said they gonna come and kill me. They said they gonna kill me. And come and the sh- the shady bar, kill whoever the shy. <laughs> Eight butterfly sea moss powder. Take your daily routine to the next level natural vegan superfood powder essential multivitamin powder made just for you what took place at st joseph high so many other schools things are not reaching to your ears or to your office because they had teachers some of them are hiding these things from you if you go to westminster school on the west coast that new school that recent uh, opened up a couple of years ago, there's some kind of stabbing, some kind of um, cuss out and fight and big fights going on in Vreden Hoop Primary School, grade six girls are molesting grade three girls. And that is just some sum that I'm calling. And people, parents- Your story, after retrieving video surveillance recording from other persons in the neighborhood and also from the CCTV camera in the area. Last week, the Guida Police Force issued a wanted bulletin for 29-year-old Akibo uh, Bramel, who had been identified as one of the three men who abducted Fico from the parking lot of the Griffin Mall. The wanted man's last known address has been given as Belay Springs in Joshua. The names of the pol- two police officers are to be charged for the abduction and robbery uh, are still to be released by the guy. Hi to the 2025 elections. And all of this because of Jack Bale's weekly tantrums. I caused them to have got momentum in their sale. It's just stupidity. But I suspect they, want, they hate this weekly tantrum that I throw here. 
the weekly tantrum. So he wants me to end the weekly tantrum so he could continue to lie about the PVP as they did in the past. Their argument was correct.